In my last few videos, I've shown you my recent trip to North Korea, but in this video, I want to tell you exactly how I traveled there. On North Korea, the breaking news. It's the most secretive society on Earth. The diplomatic talks between the US and North Korea are at a standstill. Okay, so the first thing is to go through a tour company. There are loads and they all have varying itineraries and you can find them all with a quick Google search, really. I went through Young Pioneers Tours uh, as recommended to me by other people I know that have gone on their tours and I did the Ultra Budget Tour, which was three days. It cost about 500 euros and actually ended up costing me more because, um, well, for that tour you need a multiple or double entry China visa uh, because it starts and finishes in China. Unfortunately, I think I explained in a previous video, I didn't get the double entry China visa, which meant I had to pay an additional cost to fly back to China from Pyongyang. I am the only one in the airport right now. There's no one here. This way I was able to get the transit visa in China on arrival for 144 hours, and I think there's various countries that can do that. I'm from UK, and that was an option for me. It was my fault, really, because they advised me to get the China visa through an agent, but I went directly to the Bangkok visa office, which apparently doesn't give out very many multiple entry visas to people traveling to North Korea. So other tours also fly in and out of Pyongyang, depending on the length of the trip, the itinerary and the cost. And I think there's also some that go from Vladivostok in Russia as well. For me, YPT, Young Pioneer Tours, they arranged my North Korea visa entirely. All I did was fill out a form, send a copy of my passport via email, and then the visa or North Korea travel card was there uh, when I got to Dandong and met the tour group. Just received my tourist card. This is going to be my visa and passport for the next few days. You actually don't get a stamp in your passport, you just get this little booklet that counts as your visa while you're there. And that was genuinely it. All I did was book through a company, meet them there, they had everything else arranged, and then we went through and spent three days in North Korea. Right, so how long should you go for? I went for three days and the main reason I only did three days is because I had another trip lined up directly after the dates that were available. Uh, unfortunately that didn't pan out and I didn't go on that trip but that was why I only had a limited amount of time. If it was you however I would recommend going for slightly longer. I got a tiny bit of an insight into Pyongyang doing it for three days but I would have loved to get outside the capital and maybe spend a week there and get a real a real insight into what North Korea is like, as, as much as you possibly can. So the visa situation depends on where you're from, but currently, as I understand it, most countries from around the world can get a North Korea visa, with the exception of US citizens traveling on a US passport. Now, this happened on the 1st of September 2017. The US enacted a travel ban for their uh, citizens traveling to North Korea. And this was in response, partly, uh, to Otto Warmbier, who had fallen into a coma while imprisoned in North Korea, and he died soon after being sent back to the US. Because of this as well, the tour companies won't take any uh, US people traveling on a US passport on any of their tours. I won't go into too, too much detail on this, it's, um, but that's a real danger of traveling to North Korea. It's still not exactly clear what happened to Otto Warmbier, what he did or didn't do, what they alleged he did. Um, it, but And I don't feel really qualified to talk about it really at all, but just understand that was a reality. It, it is something that happened and it's well worth to be aware of. This is a real risk of you traveling to North Korea. The political situation could change at any time and depending on where you're from, you could be targeted. Now, that was a real extreme case. So I'm not saying that out of um, fear mongering, but that is a reality. However, if you are a US citizen and you have dual citizenship, again, as I understand it, then you can travel on a second passport at your own risk. If you decide to go to North Korea, there are certain things that you're not allowed to take with you. And please look up the full list before going, do your own research and just figure out what you shouldn't take. But off the top of my head, it was religious texts, 
uh, North Korea guidebooks, um, any books about North Korea, any books about the history of um, Korea, any pornographic material, and any cameras with a GPS ability, and that includes drones as well. So I left my drone in Beijing with a friend and then came back and picked it up afterwards. The GPS thing on a camera is kind of um, grey area, I think, because most people's phones have that GPS ability anyway. They just kind of want you to not really be obvious about it. Like if you have GPS written on the front of your camera, then cover it up, for example. Like I said in a previous video, you are free to take photos and videos of most things, with the exception of military sites, military personnel, and construction sites. And my experience was that I didn't get checked at all going out, but obviously still be careful with what you say and just don't go away from the group. I think the only time one of our group got something deleted was when he walked off and started taking photos of something. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, it's your choice really. Like follow the rules and then you can, you can film and take photos of what you want. If you're in any doubt, just ask your guide. So one question I've had a few times since going is, is it safe to visit there? And I'm not talking about the safety on a political level because we've uh, I've just mentioned that and that's something that can change at any time and that's completely a reality. But on a personal safety level, I had no real fears of getting robbed or mugged or anything happening because you're there on a strict itinerary with two North Korean uh, tour guides. But there's like no crime there in North Korea anyway because of the huge and terrible ramifications for anyone that would commit a crime. So on a personal safety level, I think you'd, you'd be absolutely fine traveling there. I can't imagine, I think it's one of the least likely places in the world where you'd have things stolen or you could get mugged or anything like that. Now this video is generally just about how I visited North Korea using Young Pioneer tours. And I'm not saying, I'm not like telling you go there, go there now, go experience it. I went there because I wanted to show it and I wanted to have an insight into a country that most people don't know a lot about as well, which is the same reason I'm making this video because I think there's a few myths out there um, about it because it's this weird like unknown country and just trying to I guess get the real information that I've found out across in this video. If you do go there, like I said, there are real risks involved. For example, the Gov UK website, which is the official travel website for uh, where I'm from, the UK, they advise against all but essential travel to North Korea. And I'm not exactly sure what essential travel would be, but that's the official advice anyway. The main thing that I would say if you do decide to go is just follow the advice of your guides, follow the guidance you're given beforehand. Don't insult or make jokes about their ideology or their leaders and just generally be respectful that you're in a different country with different laws and different views to your own and you're not going there to try and change their views, you're just going there as a fly on the wall to see a little bit of what it's like. Also, don't wander away from the group, don't take it as a challenge to see how much more I can see than the last group because that's where you can get in trouble as well. If you want to go there and you know, just like respect the advice you're given beforehand. I guess what it really comes down to is just follow the laws of that country the same as you would follow the laws in any other country you visit in the world. Okay, that's it for me, and I hope some of that helps. Um, that's the end of this series of North Korea. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you an insight into the country. And I understand it's a controversial place to visit. I understand the reasons some people wouldn't want to visit. I, I completely get that. I just, I, I went there to try and show a part of it. And hopefully I've done that in these videos. Right now I'm in Nepal. I'm about to start a trek on the Tibetan border for a week, which is really exciting. So if you wanna see that, check back for the next videos. But for now, I'll just say again, thank you for watching and see you again soon.